the good enough. I run a little song for you. Hello everybody and welcome back to Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. Where we last left off, we heard the story of the theatrical railroader. And we are just now in Jackson, Florida. And we're going to continue our way down this road. The Search soldier this. sits in the dirt with his legs splayed out, like a child would sit. Beneath the tattered fabric of his antique uniform, several open wounds fester in the hot sun. Oh, jeez. And a hand, Traveler? Um. Let's ask about his Well, wounds. it's a fed ambush. I'm the only survivor. He even killed the horses. Got him mad with what we pulled off in Lawrence. Aw. As the soldier talks, blood rises from his wounds like plumes of red smoke. Jeez. Lawrence the town, not the fella. Rounded up anyone old enough to hold a gun and burn the place down. A vague tension runs underneath the silence. You realize you can't see the soldier's hands. Say, stranger, where are you from? I travel. Where are you going, Yankee? A boy knife flies past your head. So close, the wind tickles your ear. Oh, it sticks in a tree with a solid thump that clears the squirrels and birds out of the branches. When you look back, the wounded soldier's nowhere to be found. What the fuck? Well, I'm glad I didn't try to help him because he might have stabbed me. Oh, uh, you wait in the soup line for over an hour. It's barely crawling along. You round the corner of the building and see far away a lone pair of nurses struggling to ladle out soup to hundreds. Gonna be waiting here a while longer, sighs the mother in the line beside you. Seems like it. You and her gets talking. After a while, the topic drifts to a strange place, and she starts telling you about the trickster who lures humans with magic stones. You recognize it as a story about the girl with the strange stones. But way more outrageous than your story. I know that story. You tell her your version. That's not as exciting, she says uh, diplomatically. I mean, it sure sounds realer than what I heard, but I think Toby likes mine best. She bounces her child encouragingly on her hip, but Toby's too hungry to smile. He looks like a fucking demon. That's what Toby looks like. I like this guy's voice. Alright, so let's let's keep following. Get to walk in a little bit faster. Because nobody wants to freaking pick me up and hitchhike because they're all bitches. Okay, finally coming up to this house. I'm damn near gone across the freaking country. How many days has it been? Oh, look, palm trees! You rest in a field where a well-dressed stranger talks your ear off on all manner of subjects. The weather, fireflies in summer, how combine harvesters work. After a while... The mood shifts. Heard my death bones this morning. What the hell does that mean? Death bones. Heard them rattle like clank, clink, clank. More startling than wind chimes in a tornado. He plucks dry grass and chews on a piece. Ain't much time left now. You seem young. That don't matter. I'm fine. Got my savior waiting at the pearly gates. The man shifts uncomfortably. Huh, at least I do as of this afternoon, I hope. Nearly knocked the pastor's door down earlier. Sure was mm. good to meet you. 
The man pauses, rubs his chin in contemplation. Don't, um, don't let the bedbugs bite. He walks off slow. After his silhouette becomes small in the horizon, but before he vanishes, you see him collapse to the ground. Oh, sad. Um, okay. Death bones. Avascular necrosis is the death of bone tissue due to a lack of blood supply. Uh, can lead to tiny breaks in the bone and the bones eventually collapse. Hmm. Okay. Well, there you have it. Okay, move on. I love this guy's voice. I'm just gonna go like this because I can't move the... I can't move my... Oh, no wonder I wasn't walking straight. <laughs> Idiot. Oh, Miami! Here we go. Here's an established city. Yes, this is what I wanted. No, I don't want to ride now. You fucking... Or I'm here. Yay! Seagulls scream overhead as you mosey down the beach. Out at sea, ships crawl along the horizon towards the harbor. The sun's a little intense, so you search for a scrap of shade. You've Six enjoyed four. a break on the beach, staring off the edge of the world. But the sun is starting to go down, and the breeze is getting stronger. As you're about to stand, a man plonks down near you. He sits a polite distance off, but looks at you. Think he wants to talk. He smiles weakly. I just got fired. First Spanish American radio host in the state, and they fired me. They needed to make cuts, I get that, but I'm twice the He trails off. I don't know what I'm going to tell my wife. Great. I could try that the sucks. docks, but there's already more men than jobs. And I could barely support the family on what they pay. He hangs his head. And my boy. I can't bring myself to tell them. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm, sad. He calms as the sun drops below the horizon. An expanse of darkness is ahead of you. Turning back to the lights of the city reminds you that the world hasn't gone away. After a long silence, he speaks. It's never going to get better, is it? It will. It takes you a moment to notice his sobbing over the noise of the waves. I've got to tell them, haven't I? I'll go to the port in the morning and see if they'll take me. You can no longer make him out in the dark, but his hand touches your shoulder as he leaves. Oh, sad. Alright, let's earn some money. You wander the streets of the city looking for a way to make some cash. Alright, we haven't tried panhandling yet, so let's try it. You sit outside a grocery store with your hat out until a young man in apron quietly asks you to leave. My mom says she's going to come out and kick your ass, he whispers. Uh, let her try. Please, the kid whispers. He digs all around his pocket, comes up with a couple of coins. He throws them down in your hat and, and again begs you to go. Please, she's not go- she's not joking. We'll go. He gave me money. You pack your stuff and hurry down the street. When you glance over your shoulder, you see a towering woman in a blood-stained butcher's apron watching you from the door to the grocery. She crosses her arms, bulged with muscle like- like a pair of crossed seals. Wow. Okay. Um, alright, so we're good on everything. Atlanta, New Orleans. Where's New Orleans? Oh, fuck. I can't think where New Orleans is. Um... We don't need anything. 
So, I guess let's just leave. Oh, a uh, fireplace. Okay, so where's Atlanta? Did we pass Atlanta? Isn't it like up here? That, there it is. So I want to follow this back up this way to go to Atlanta. Okay. Alright, so let's go here and then... Let's finish this area. The blistering we'll head up sun towards Atlanta. scared even birds into the shade. <clears throat> but a middle-aged woman and a young couple are still collecting scraps of cotton that the machinery missed. With a ragged voice, the older woman calls to you. You got any water? Sure. The three of them rush over to you, suddenly reanimated. They pass around your canteen. When you get it back, it's empty. A woman squeezes your hand and sighs with relief. Sweetest thing I ever tasted. Probably mixed with some other stuff. I mean, why not, Cher? <clears throat> Electric lamps stipple the cotton field before you with an orange light, moving like a group of lethargic fireflies. From the field, the voices of the workers reach you in a soulful, united song. Press You're nearby. gently lulled to sleep as the song floats <clears throat> over you. Excuse me. Hello, Lordy. Pick a bale of cotton. Hello, Lordy. Pick a bale of day. Yeah, You're pulled out off. of your slumber by a woman's pained scream. Oh, and a collection of shouts rising from the field. Okay, what? Yeah, force yourself to go back to sleep. No. The woman's screams taper off, soon replaced by the raw cries of an infant. Applause briefly fills she the She just night, had a baby. Eventually fading back into song. You wow. wake up to the gentle crescendo of the worker's song, unsure if it ever ceased at all. Yeah, someone's screaming bloody murder near us. Let's just go back to sleep. That's the best solution right now. What the hell? Who does that? Oh, I wish I was in Florida right now. After gossiping for a while about the weather and the crops and the state of the world, all bad and getting worse, he takes a different track. Track. Um, what should his voice be? I feel like I've gone through all of my man voices. You look like someone who likes a good story. He wheezes. Try this one on for size. After loudly and repeatedly clearing his throat, he tells you the story of the dead woman in the yellow ribbon. My story, bitch. It sounds a lot like the story of the elegant woman in the small town, but with some starts, parts changed and other parts added. Listen to the tale. When he grins up at you in the conclusion of the, conclusion of the tale, you give him a, the effusive praise he's apparently expecting. You'll have to remember that version. Even if it's not quite what happened, it's a good story. They're all fucking good stories. Okay. I mean, duh, they're good. I mean, they're my stories. Okay. Wow, look at all of the little waters around here. Who is this? Oh, Kara? Kara? You oh, look good, honey. Oh, you got a light? You like a good story? I'm not interested, lady. I like to hear about people and make bets with them. I like to hear about the weird, handsome people. Get convinced by the rich jackasses who'll play blackjack and lose into the night. Dames who are lit cigarettes burning to the end. I want to be around furious Girl. people who use me and I use them. Are you one stranger? Oh, no, you fucking weirdo. Me. Hey, you nasty. got any exciting stories? Like the movies? Ugh, I could try. Uh, Casey Jones. The Grave Robber. The Wounded Deer. The Twins. Um, the Farmers. The Cotton Pickers. Uh, the Dreams in the Cotton Field of Miami. The Seance. Wounded Soldier. Oh, let's tell the Wounded Soldier. You tell the story of the Wounded Soldier. 
Uh, were you trying to scare me? Sorry, honey, that one's just boring. You know, I get cleared out now and then. See, why do the dialogue sometimes not play? Like being hit in the stomach, like being slapped up good and proper when you watch the chips move away from you. My portrait's on every good casino's wall, sweetheart. But I always come back like a bad penny. Because I can't lose. You look and like I you're won't. 80. And I'll take everything you got and losing ain't shit to me when I can get back up. You hey, psycho. Got any exciting stories? Oh. Like the movies? I don't have any exciting stories like the movies. <sighs> Tell the story of the strange streets lost in time. The dead woman. They're all scary. Made molasses. Um, serious woman with a letter. Traveled. All right, for this one. Let's see if she likes this one. I don't know. Sounds like you're trying to sell me something with a sad tale. If you want to do that, honey, you gotta make it seem real. The country is currently in a depression. There's nothing exciting going on. Everybody is dying. Everybody is hungry, okay? There's nothing like the movies. Sometimes, you know, I think... I can't even afford to go to the to movies make right you now. stop, Ms. Dupree? Will you shut Maybe up? Maybe it's love that would make me stop roaming and stop betting. And I think sometimes boys are like gambling, ain't they? You put all your concentration on them, you grift them, you follow them, you wait for them to pay off. But sometimes you just get shot in the stomach. And you wake up in that hospital and think, I ain't for love, Joe, I ain't for it. I can't be cared for, I can't afford it, no sir. Hey, got any exciting story? No, I don't, you're psycho. Jeez. The boy who ran away to Maine. Um... And who seemed all right with death. Let's tell her about the seagulls. That's not a sad story. All I have is scary and Quit sad stories. Quit it, stories. stranger. That sweet nonsense will kill me young. Faster than the dr- Tomorrow's so the annoying. great gamble. There's a light out there on the horizon. I guess this a will get my stories out. something golden. There ain't something for all of us out there. But there's that hope. <laughs> I can tell you're looking for it, too. You know, if you shit. stop to look down, there might not be anything below your feet. But you're still moving forward. Got any stories with means. ghosts or murderers yeah. or blood or something like that? Oh. Let me tell you. Um. No. Uh. This one. The guy who is about to get murdered. <laughs> Just what I asked for. Mm. That spooky stuff gets my heart going like a good hand. So what do I want? <laughs> what do anyone want? I want to be claimed. Better by English Satan. literacy. I want to be consumed. I want to be won. I want to be the beautiful score, the desire and respect on someone's lips. What Hell, are you talking about? Maybe I can find a job, maybe in some dive bar, serve the old men who will become my friends for life. Get complex somehow with people who are warm. You psycho. But maybe I'm too You need blind. help. Got any stories with ghosts or murderers? Or yeah, I have a lot of those. Um... Let's see. Let's tell this one. The Silent Twins. God damn, you're giving me the chills, sweetheart. Yeah, I, I spent got a, a lot night of those in stories. jail once. A lot of shit happens to me. And it were nicer than a prospect of going back to where I was born, you know, just to become what my mom always wanted me to be. When I was 12, she caught me kissing a girl once. And I felt like I would never get out of all the strands of her red as hell fury. Twelve? That's a little young. I said to her, but you said I ain't to kiss no boys, and I ain't. But she and I both knew that ain't what she meant. 
Next time, let's up the stakes, shall we? Why don't we spend some time with bourbon and five-card stud? You bring the bourbon, of course. No. And when the moon's fuller, I might let you in on some secrets on life. Have you any? No, I'm not seeing you again. When my the gambler. Alright, so... We're gonna go back up to Atlanta. Uh, see what these little farmhouses got to offer. Oh, that woman is here already. We'll go up for here, but I'm not touching that damn fire. Okay. Because I think that's her. Yeah, that's her again. Fucka, you, uh... Okay, I'm pretty sure I can fast travel in this game, but I'm not sure how He's to. He's small for his age. Boy of 13 or so. Sitting on an upturned bucket by the side of a tiny wedge of farmland. The dog, as though by contrast, is massive. An enormous yellow-brown mutt. He's called Rover, the boy explains. Paul says he can't come with us. Aww. West. You notice the Model A truck on the yard. Piled high with furnishings and trunks and bags and knots of rope to tie it all together. And upon all that, too, yet more dust and grit. Paul says it has to be better. With one toe tip, he scratches a parabola on the dead, dry ground. Aww. Paul says we can't afford to feed Rover no more. You can't tell where the blonde of the dog's coat ends and the omnipresent dust begins. Same goes for the boy's hair. Will you take him? You can't, I Rover should. Rover follows you eagerly after you feed him the tiniest sliver of jerky. But a few hours later, he snaps to attention as though hearing some distant noise your ears can't catch. The last you see of him are the markings left by his dirty pelt on the leaves of the underbrush. Aww. Well, I'm not just gonna leave a dog. I love animals too much. First tree in a mile. Has a tree? It's a stout myrtle with bald branches. No relief from the sun out here. Leaves would help. Someone hadn't replaced them all with dusty glass bottles. What the fuck? Who would do that? You cool down in the shade. The breeze blows through the bottles, making a series of heavy, hollow sounds. You think about wind chimes and the smell of fresh pies on windowsills. Mm. The dense sound of many conversations cuts your nap short. There's no one around. Not until you look up at the bottles. They're filled with bright blue orbs, and words echo from them. None seem to notice. All right, we have a lot of sad stories, so let's listen to the Can't laughter. Get Porcelain, chrome, the rusty ones. Gotta turn those sleek faucets. Ever find me in a hardware store, I'm gonna haunt it till the cows come home. Laughter rumbles inside neighboring bottles. What the fuck does that even mean? Okay. Well, let's see what this has in it. A tiny motor mouth is eagerly sharing... Eagerly sharing the details of a strange tale with her brother as they loiter outside this house. The boy listens raptly. He, uh, eyes growing larger, mouth hanging open like a fish. He's tell she's telling him about how there ain't been a man hired to any job anywhere in New York City in over a month. 
Try to hide your surprise. It's the story of the man who had traveled 600 miles to find a single job. The version of the girls must have heard, uh, the version the girl must have heard is embellished, to say the least, but hey, it's a good story. Sick, sick. All right, where are we? All right, so we want to keep heading up the coast and go to, we can go to him and then head up to Atlanta, I guess. Why is there a house out there in the middle of nowhere? This looks like, uh, like a swamp or something. I don't actually know if I can walk in the water or not. I'll probably try. I mean, I can't walk over here. Okay, let's see what this has to offer. A sign in town says a farmer is hiring for the sugarcane harvest. A bag-eyed man drives you and ten hungry strangers out into the cane. I don't need money. Where he leaves you. Everyone gets a hatchet, but no instruction. The foreman is missing for some reason. Nobody is sure what to do. Start cutting that shit. A young man in a red jacket stuffs all the hatchets in his pack. This is stupid, he says. I'm leaving. You can get five bucks for a nice axe like this. He marches off into the cane and others follow. Don't, a young woman shouts after them. It's not right. It's not right. You don't owe the farmer shit, she's right. I don't know, I guess she's right. The thief left some hatchets behind. So you and the three chumps left start chopping cane. It's brutal work. None of you know what you're doing. Keep going, the girl calls. Her hands are bleeding and her face is bright with sweat. Soon, her cane is piled high. Am. Sometime after noon, the truck rolls up with a boozy foreman riding oh, shotgun. Great. Good work, he croaks. The girl wipes her blood-pinked hands on her apron to take her pay but doesn't notice the crumpled body in the back of the truck or the hatchets heaped beside it. He killed him? Blinded to the threat of death. Oh, shit! My god. All right, I'm gonna have to end the episode there. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked, please leave a like. And if you want to see more in the future, make sure you subscribe. I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.